There's no wizard as devoted to the magic as Dalinar. Welcome to another Dragonlance Saga episode. My name is Adam, and today we're going to talk about Dalimar the Dark. I'd like to take a moment and thank the members of this channel and invite you to consider becoming a member by visiting the link in the description below. You can even pick up Dragonlance Gaming materials using my affiliate links. I am referencing the Legends, Dragons of a New Age, and War of Souls trilogies, including the Dragonlance Adventure Sourcebook and Dragonlance.fandom.com for this information. If I leave anything out or misspeak, please leave a comment below. Dalimar's life is one of influence. He was at the key position to influence history at every point of his life. Not only did he rise to the head of the conclave of the Orders of High Sorcery, but he would interact with both gods and men to shape Kryn through military and political maneuvering. His ambition may have been greater than his capacity to achieve, but his devotion to balance and the magic is unparalleled by any other wizard. Dalimar was born Dalimar Argent to House Servitor in Sylvanost. The Sylvanesty Elves live in a caste system, so each house has social and political barriers. Because of this, Dalimar would have only been able to advance as a mage up to a student's capacity. But Dalimar wanted more. He would find spellbooks and study them in secret until he was discovered. With his attention to his daily duties failing, Dalimar was sent to House Cleric, and there he was afforded the opportunity to continue studying magic. When the dragon army attacked Sylvanesty, Dalimar proposed a counter-attack, which brought him little prestige, and while the plan was good, it ultimately failed, and Dalimar migrated to southern Ergoth with his countrymen. While there, he met a Kaganesty elf, Kagothala, and had an affair with her as she taught him their magic. Dalimar took the name Dalimar Night's Son and stayed in Silvamori for years. When Raceland Majir ended Lorak's nightmare, Dalimar made a note of the wizard's name and accomplishments, and would rise to the opportunity years later to study under him. Dalimar pledged himself to Nuatari, something Sylvanesty elves are forbidden from doing, and was caught by wildrunners and ultimately exiled by Portheos and Alhana Starbreeze. Dalimar was cast from the light and became known as Dalimar the Dark. Dalimar would return the favor to Alhana and Portheos in years to come. For now, Dalimar needed to find the Tower of High Sorcery and take his test. It would take much searching of ancient ruins before the forest of Weyrith called to Dalimar, and in his test he was presented with the opportunity of stopping Lorak from taking the Dragon Orb from the Tower of High Sorcery in Istar. Dalimar refused to save Sylvanesty and chose devotion to the magic instead. He was accepted into the Order of the Black Robes and sent by Ladonna to kill the renegade that murdered Dalimar's benefactor from Sylvanesty. After succeeding, he was offered the chance to study under Raceland Majir in order to spy on the renegade wizard. Dalimar knew that this was incredibly dangerous, but he would learn more from Raceland than any other wizard and accepted. It would cost him, as his Shalafi would burn five wounds into his chest for the deceit, and unknown to Dalimar, he was playing into Raceland and later... Lord Soth's schemes. Dalimar would nearly be killed by Kidiar in the Blue Ladies' War, his one-time lover, and after the war he became the head of the Order of the Black Robes, and when the Conclave assaulted Storm's Keep in an attempt to stop the Knights of Tachesis, Dalimar was nearly killed again, as was the head of the Conclave. This allowed Dalimar to rise to the highest position any wizard is able to, and became the point man for every major political move that would follow. Traitors to Sevenesty and Quolinesty provided Dalimar with the opportunity to help exile Portheos and Elhana from the Elven Kingdoms, and the moment of revenge was too sweet to pass up. He also received a month in Sylvanesty as payment. While he had achieved all of his goals, his love for his homeland was ever-present, but his devotion to the magic would not wane. Dalimar would be plagued by the true master of both past and present, even in death, as the servants of the tower would still obey Raislin. When Palin was given the staff of Magius, it confounded Dalimar, and when Raceland left the abyss and stood in his tower, Dalimar was more than happy to send Palin and his old Shalafi to solace during the Chaos War. This war would change 
everything, however, and in the aftermath, Dalimar was confounded by the loss of his magic. He was taught necromancy by Tachesis in the guise of the Shadow Sorcerer and learned of Kelandros' desire for the Tower of High Sorcery, so he teleported it to Nightland, where Dalimar lived in exile with his necromancy, essentially trapped for over 30 years. When Mina returned with the One God, which was revealed to also be Tachesis, Dalimar and Palin refused to serve her and were killed. Their spirits were trapped, and Dalimar would barter for his resurrection and the return of his magic. After Tachesis' death, he would be given it. For the first time in his life, Dalimar realized he was no longer the driving force in Kryn and decided to aid Corrin Brinefolk. When Corrin saved Jenna and Dalimar, they would assist her in saving the Tower of High Sorcerer in Weyrith. Dalimar would be reinstated as head of the Order of the Black Robes, while Jenna would be the head of the Conclave. Jenna assigned Dalimar to watch over the Tower of Weyrith and rebuild it, and this is where Dalimar lives to this day. His life was initially one of stifled ambition, only to realize his greatest dreams through hard-fought sacrifice and loss. He rose to the highest position of power on Kryn, and after the Chaos War, Dalimar struggled to find a place for himself. He was at the top of his game, only to be laid low. Even with his resurrection and the return of his magic, he was a shadow of what he had once been. Perhaps this is where he truly earns his name, Dalimar the Dark not for the loss of his homeland, but for the loss of his power and influence that he spent his lifetime working toward. In the end, his devotion to the magic tempered his ambition and pride, and he finally lives his life in service to the magic, rather than using the magic for his own ambition. Dalimar is wise beyond his years, and has suffered as much as anyone on Kryn. He has survived when those he schemed with did not. He paid every price for the magic, and would do it all over again. So whether you agree with his personal politics or not, you have to respect him for his mastery. His mastery of both himself, the magic, and his maintenance of the balance that is so integral to Dragonlance. But that is all I have to say about Dalimar the Dark. Do you think he got a fair shake in the Fifth Age? Should he have schemed with traitors to the Elven homelands? And finally, did he ever become more influential than his Shalafi? Leave a comment below. I would like to take a moment and remind you to subscribe to this YouTube channel, ring the bell to get notified about upcoming videos, and click the like button. This all goes to help other Dragonlance fans learn about this channel and its content. Thank you for watching. This has been Adam with Dragonlance Saga, and until next time, remember, don't start trouble you can't finish.